Hello, and thank you for joining me for this important session on planning for interoperability with Zero Trust Frameworks. My name is Kevin Hansen, and I'm the public sector CTO for Microfocus Government Solutions. Why don't we go ahead and get started, and I can keep this under 15 minutes. Within organizations today, there are typically two different scenarios going on around Zero Trust. One is local, as in what are they doing to fix or include Zero Trust in their enclave? The other is strategic, in that the enclaves shouldn't be implementing Zero Trust only based on their local needs. This disconnect most often leads to a loss in line of sight into how organizations must integrate across the pillars of Zero Trust, a mission imperative to achieving Zero Trust maturity. When you do an analysis across these pillars based on desired outcomes, you find that a number of the pillars are actually interconnected as inputs into the other pillars to create that Zero Trust effect you always find that there are these interconnections. So with regard to these interconnections, it's vitally important they are addressed and you make sure that in your planning and in your architecture, that each of these interconnections are talking to the right pillars of zero trust. And that is when you start creating that zero trust effect. As you continue planning and implementation of zero trust solutions, a best practice is to constantly ask about and understand the interoperability. As a strategic undertaking, zero trust is best approach with private industry partners who recognize it is not a single technology, but a comprehensive cybersecurity strategy achieved with the help of flexible and interoperable technologies. In other words, ideal private industry partners should be outcome focused on successfully achieving holistic cybersecurity goals. Federal agencies have a continuum of maturity across the zero trust pillars, focused on making incremental progress in successive iterations, as shown here by the CISA ZTA maturity model capabilities. Inflexible products, services, technologies, and vendors can prevent agencies from applying stronger user authentication, conducting better asset verification, implementing additional protect surfaces, or completing other steps necessary to increase their zero trust maturity. Componentized technologies that leverage and integrate with an organization's existing security technologies are much more adaptable and conducive to realistic progress. To that end, it's incumbent on private industry to validate that their technologies natively integrate to address multiple pillars of a comprehensive zero trust architecture, or otherwise effectively interoperate with a large enough ecosystem of technologies to provide a friendly and user-centric experience. Now, in order for an adaptive security infrastructure in your environment to be effective, Security controls need to move beyond prescriptive risk policies and leverage deeper request context and behavior analysis. As best practices suggest, using a hybrid approach where prescriptive access policies are enforced by default, but are given less weight individually as behavioral information for a specific user is most effective. To accommodate diverse scenarios, organizations typically require a mix of strong and passive authentication methods. This enables you to apply the best fit based on the specific need and the associated risk. For example, how sensitive the information is and the context of the incoming request. Our view is that Zero Trust is a welcome addition to the application security stack but it requires an underlying shift in the way access is delivered. With zero trust, neither the user's device nor the origin of the request automatically grants access to services. Rather, it requires a greater understanding of context of the request, as well as a higher level of verification of the identity requesting it. It's a rigorous and adaptive level of security. With continuous authentication, the system's assessment of whether access to a service should continue is repeatedly reassessed. 
Access metrics are continuously gathered and the risk is frequently being recalculated. As your IT security teams define the risk models that fit their mission, the zero trust paradigm is a closed loop representation, not an open one. Not only is closed loop monitoring and control a much higher level of security, but it's conducive to behavior analytics, which provides a level of identity centric metrics far beyond standard risk metrics commonly in use today. The grant and forget model of access control has its place in enforcing legacy policies, but it falls significantly short in today's threat landscape. Now, in addition to the security advantages of retaining access control for each session, continuous user tracking does more than enhance the ability to protect assets. It enables you to build a much larger library of user context. This repository of contextual information provides a foundation from which user and entity behavior analytics can be applied to build a deeper level of risk intelligence that extends far beyond typical risk-based authentication. Because new authentication purchases typically originate within a program, they are often solved from a specific tactical perspective. This approach leaves organizations with multiple authentication silos, building access, remote access, compliance requirements, and so on. These disjointed implementations impose higher administration overhead and inefficient processes. But more importantly, they create vulnerabilities due to inconsistent authentication policies. What's become very evident is the current MFA approach in government hasn't been sufficient to stop lateral movement. So having continuous authentication, continuous authorization beyond the perimeter is where the advancement in zero trust multi-factor authentication maturity can be obtained. One of the painful challenges we've had with the existing approach is all of the applications in your portfolio needed to support public key infrastructure, for example, in order to support the government issued multi-factor authentication. Another challenge is there are additional MFA use cases outside of smart cards. So there's limitations in the current multi-factor authentication. One of the key areas we can improve MFA, particularly in a zero trust context, is having a framework, a centralized framework where applications can hand the MFA continuous authorization and authentication off to a centralized enterprise service that supports all sorts of multi-factor authentication factors and methods. Now, did you know there are currently well over 30 unique MFA methods available in the market today? We have use cases where folks lose their smart cards or they're stolen. We have mission partners who don't have government issued credentials. And then we have civilian facing applications where we must move away from passwords and adopt new MFA technologies that are widely available for use commercially and US citizens are currently using every day. So there's a real opportunity to advance the maturity of that MFA and not keep putting the burden on the application developers who should be focused on developing their applications. Successful MFA programs will provide mission partners with options and flexibility for both current and future MFA needs. Our NetIQ Advanced Authentication Framework ensures that you won't get locked into authentication silos or stuck with outdated technology. Microfocus provides an open framework that aggressively updates as new technologies emerge, including compatibility with FIDO UTF based devices. Now catching crafty or persistent threat actors requires not only detecting well-known threats, but also enabling behavioral profiling of every entity. The best way to identify and protect against imposter based or malicious insider attacks is to learn the unique normal behavior of every identity in the environment. This type of baseline enables NetIQ Risk Service to detect most anomalous and suspicious behaviors, whether they are malicious, accidental, or otherwise suspect. The NetIQ Risk Service computes risk information from a wide range of sources, including IP address and reputation, geolocation, users' identity, roles, 
and profile information, device ID, uniquely created fingerprint of the device, cookie and browser information, header information, history, patterns of access, and information from external sources. The breadth of input range allows for fine grain risk computation. This course helps identify potential threats faster and applies rules-based policies to mitigate increases in risk. These prescriptive contextual rules have become the foundation of risk-based access control. But although these access control requirements are essential for enforcing government security policies, they are unfortunately not enough on their own. Over time, both insiders and persistent attackers often learn how to navigate around these static risk policies. These unknown threats require additional controls based on dynamic risk policies. A modern application security stack should also enable you to secure API access for your mission partners and users, while also making it easy to combine multiple APIs to create new functionality without exposing your application infrastructure behind it. Introducing NetIQ Secure API Manager, a comprehensive solution for development, lifecycle management, security, integration, and monitoring of all types of APIs, be it REST, SOAP, web services, IoT, or legacy custom APIs. NetIQ Secure API Manager includes a highly scalable API gateway that provides options to secure, control, transform, and manage APIs of all types. The API gateway allows you to control traffic while also enabling secure access to the APIs from anywhere. Traditional data security controls embedded throughout existing IT infrastructure has proven increasingly ineffective as data has become more pervasive, mobile, and cross-functional. With migration to hybrid IT and an increasing reliance on SaaS applications, organizations might not have the accessibility or development resources for API level integration with their self-developed applications. Voltage secure data protects sensitive data wherever it flows, on premises, in the cloud, and in big data analytic platforms. Voltage encryption delivers data privacy protection, neutralizes data breaches, and drives mission innovation through secure data use. Voltage Secure Data Century accelerates time to value by enabling privacy compliance and offers consistency for end-to-end -end data protection. Organizations can deploy Voltage Secure Data Century on-premises and in the cloud. Voltage Secure Data Century communicates with ICAP capable network infrastructure such as HTTP proxies and load balancers to apply security policies to data traveling to and from the cloud. And it intercepts JDBC and ODBC API calls to apply security policies to data traveling to and from the database. Wherever it is deployed, the enterprise retains complete control over the infrastructure without the need to share encryption keys or token vaults with any other party. Sentry's inspection mode ensures that security policies can be targeted at the specific data fields and file attachments that contain the sensitive information. Microfocus Application Security Services is an integrated set of product offerings designed to address zero trust at the edge and presents an opportunity to quickly advance the maturity of your environment by delivering advanced enterprise application security capabilities. Microfocus Government Solutions welcomes the opportunity to join your Zero Trust team and actively contribute to achieving mission objectives as quickly as possible to expedite a smooth transition to ZTA and more effective security operations. Our cybersecurity software portfolio is focused on four key areas to help our customers achieve cyber resilience and deliver the required mission outcomes. It's no coincidence that these four focus areas also align with several key government-wide cyber initiatives, namely securing applications, securing data, limiting risk through identity and access governance, 
and then closely monitoring the unique behavior of every user device for advanced threats in order to more quickly detect and respond to these. Thank you again for joining me today for this session on planning for interoperability with Zero Trust Frameworks. For more information, please visit our website at microfocus.com or cyberres.com. Or of course, you can contact me directly at kevin.hansen at microfocusgov.com. Please enjoy the rest of your day.